All right, yeah, we did our um, project on blockchain, and we're doing a security okay. demonstration. So okay. blockchain is a di distributed ledger technology over a network of computers, which uh, is alternative to the central system. It's a distributed database. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. It has transparency with pseudonymity, and the records are immutable after a certain time, and it has computational logic. So uh, the data structure of blockchain is that uh, it has a hash, and uh, the transactions are formatted into blocks that are linked together using a hashing algorithm. And the linear nature makes past transactions immutable. And the timestamp asserts that the order of transactions is accurate and complete. So um, the data integrity is basically each subsequent block has the previous hash, and changing the previous hash will change the hash function of all the subsequent blocks, which would cause the other nodes to reject the changes. So um, that's how we have data integrity, and then we also have some type of security with the private key. So with the distributed peer-to-peer -peer system, every node has a full copy of the data set since the genesis block, and this el eliminates the central point of failure. Uh, the software updates by consensus, so it's a crowdsource. If you change it and the crowd, it's not like, it, it doesn't agree to the hash, then obviously it's rejected. Uh, it has transparency with privacy. So every tr not all transactions are visible to everyone, but they are traceable throughout the chain. And despite having full copies of the database transactions, none of the user's identities are visible. So the old system, we have a you know, manufacturer, a dealer, a leasing company, and then a scrap. And every time there's a, a step, there's an in-house ledger. And it includes middleman fees, it's slow, it has overhead fees, there's audits to be completed, and they can set prices to whatever they want, and you have to pay for it. With the blockchain system, each, um, the entire life cycle is included in the, in the entire node, in each, in each node, and basically uh, it's used, it uses shared ledgers and smart contracts to um, assert that, that this system works and the lifetime is tracked. And uh, instead of cars, we could track the organic, if bananas are organic, for example. And then uh, if sports mem memorabilia is fake or uh, real, and uh, if, you know, any digital transactions we could trace. And using blockchain, it's estimated that you know, they can reduce infrastructure costs by $1.5 trillion per year by 2022. Uh, for, for traditional transactions, basically uh, if A has some type of uh, weight, basically when A and B has uh, a transaction, they could have completely different databases and ways to record and include software and people to validate each step. With a new system, uh, there's some lag. I have one. Oh, there we go. Uh, with a new system, uh, B knows A because they're on the same uh, server. And uh, even though, like, it's basically all the records there's no risk, and you don't have to validate because it's on the same system. And then once a transaction is implemented, it's added to a new block uh, subsequent to the chain. So an example of how blockchain works is that two parties exchange data for a transaction. There's a verification step to determine if, that, um, the, cert, to determine if the transaction is valid. There's a structure with the hash mechanism and adds to the chain. There's a mining procedure, which um, basically there's a proof of work and it cannot be falsified. And you have to use appropriate level of a computing power to solve each block. And once each block is validated, it adds to the chain and it adds to the entire network. And then for the defense, um, uh, there's like a crowdsourcing uh, checking system to prevent corruption. So the back end is it's a shared ledger and you append only through the chain. And um, the smart contract is the computer code to exchange uh, assets without the need of a middleman. 
There's permissions for visibility to transactions are secure, and consensus. All have to, all nodes have to agree to the verify transaction. So types of block trade. There's public. It's very slow. Each node has to be updated every transaction, but it allows for complete transparency. There's consortium, which means that uh, it's more efficient because only certain nodes can verify each transaction and while increasing privacy. So pri and then there's private blockchain, which is um, co companies or government control the verification process. And for permissioned, uh, sometimes you can restrict access to creating a smart contract. Um, the vulnerabilities of blockchain is shown through Bitcoin because Bitcoin has been around for a while and uh, we decided to cover that a little bit. So a 51% attack is when uh, a consortium of computers, of supercomputers using better GPU uh, take over a certain blockchain. And when they control more than 50% of the entire blockchain, they basically own it and they can manipulate transaction history uh, by sheer domination. Um, for double spending, uh, the, it takes 10 minutes to confirm a transaction, and there's ways to double spend before the transactions are fully validated. A block fork is basically um, if, a, if a person makes a certain uh, uh, a, a sequence of blocks after the chain private and elongates the chain. Uh, faster than the public is able to mine it, then and and then uh, the person who is malicious can push it, and because his chain is the longest, everyone basically uh, says that his is the reputable block, which it's a, it's a type of selfish mining, which means he claims credibility towards every single block, uh, every single block added to the chain after that. So these are the vulnerabilities. And uh, obviously, there's also privacy <coughs> leakage when the private information of a owner is revealed through, uh, through uh, not as secure privacy concerns. And then there's smart, there's smart contract attacks, which the same transaction code can be ran uh, multiple times. And for example, uh, 55 million was taken away because of the same transaction code was uh, used with, with a smart contract, and then there's a private key attack. If the private key is known uh, through whatever process, then attackers can transfer coins, and we can't even trace the attackers. So to pre prevent the vulnerabilities, there's sharding. So what what this does is uh, certain nodes of the database only updates, and then this increases the the faster a validation process to prevent double spending. Uh, firewalls can prevent DDoS. Uh, we could remove mining aspects if a certain blockchain has certain permissions already. Hard forks means that if, in case of a DDoS, we basically split, uh, it's moved backwards in time and a new chain is started before the attack. Uh, the voting based algorithm increases privacy for um, public transaction and also private transaction ID uh, makes uh, transaction pri private as well. So uh, there's a bit of lag. So once we increase the security for from cyber attacks, establish additional privacy, then we could apply blockchain to financial, public records, private records, physical access, intellectual property, everything. Um, go ahead, Ivan. We have a demo. Okay. So we built a blockchain implementation, and I would like to demonstrate how the code works. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of intuition of how the whole blockchain system works. So this is very basic blockchain implementation. And the blockchain is basically created by blocks that have numbers from 0, 1, two and every number has increment of one. The block chain, the block number zero is a little bit special and it only holds the initial state. So to have a blockchain, you need to have a hash function. 
to create hash for these blocks and to have transactions. So I'm just going to go into, I inspect all of the pieces that are going to create a blockchain. Um, so these are going to be our test transactions. They are random. And we have Alice and Bob. Whenever Alice has a value of minus three and Bob has a value of three, means Alice sends three coins to Bob. Um, we also have a state which represents at a certain time, point of time, what's the transaction balance between the two of them. Um, so in order to have a blockchain, we need to have a way to verify those transactions. And I'm demonstrating here how we can make a valid transaction as Alice sends three coins and Bob receives three coins. An invalid transaction would be if Alice sends four coins, but Bob only receives three coins. Another invalid transaction would be if Alice sends more than she has at the current state. So this transaction would be filed as invalid. Uh, a valid transaction would be, in this case, if Alice sends four, co sends four coins, Bob receives two, and Lisa receives two. So um, all these tests are being passed right now. And then here we have a hash function. In this hash function, no matter what you put inside, you're going to get a value of hash that has the same length. And we're going to use this for to create hash of all of the transactions. That's going to be kind of a key for each block. So this is our initial blockchain. And we are using just a Python list to represent blockchain. So right now it's empty. The first block is block zero. And it's also called, well, let's call it block zero. It is a special block because it doesn't have, it doesn't point to a parent block. And it only has one transaction that is the initial state. So here is our blockchain with added block zero inside. And then this function would add all of the transactions into blocks. So these are the transactions that we're going to test. They are 15, and we are going to use the previous function with block size 5. It means five transactions in each block to put all of these transactions into the blockchain. So this is what our blockchain looks like. Uh, we have block 0, block 1, and I think there are three, four blocks. So we have all of the transactions into block and blocks, and they're being inserted into the blockchain. But then in order to trust the transactions and in, this, the, in order to trust the block, we have to run a, a blockchain validation function. So this function would first verify that the hash of the content of each block matches the hash that we have right now. It checks the number of each block to be with increment of one. It also checks the parent hash, if the parent hash matches with what we have in the block as parent hash. And it also matches the number of transactions are matching, um, are supposed to be same as what we have in the block, and also validate every each transaction inside the block. So let's check what we have. And after we validate each transaction, we also can calculate the, the end state after running each block. So this functionality gives you the ability to receive so what you, you only need to trust the initial state. You only need to agree that Alex has 50 coins and Bob has 50 coins. Then if I agree to this, I can receive, um, 
I can receive blocks from anybody without needing to trust them. And with this uh, um, validation functionality, I can validate if the blocks are authentic. And uh, this code is on GitHub, and I'm going to post the link on the chat. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the code. Yeah, okay. that's our presentation. Right. Thank you. But uh, is there a way 